Now, but the kids who lack fathers, I mean, first of all, they can find that to some degree in their friends. Okay. And that's often what fatherless boys do in particular. They, they, they go into gangs mm -hmm. and they generate the missing men masculinity in the gang. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not so good because like, what the hell do they know? Yeah. They, well, they don't know anything, right? Mm -hmm. They're just stupid kids and they're like 15 years old and their testosterone is pumping and they're trying to get the hell away from their mother, which is what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. and, and they're not in the right position to exercise any authority over themselves. So mm -hmm. that's, that's not good. They can find it in education. They can find it in books. They can find it in movies. They can find it in sports heroes and so forth because the image of the father is fragmented and distributed among the community. Okay. But it's very, very difficult to not have a father. Right. And you know, one of the things that we're doing in our society, which I think is, I think it's absolutely appalling, is that we're making the case that all families are equal. Mm -hmm. It's like, sorry, no, wrong. And, and there's no empirical data supporting that proposition, by the way. It's much better for kids to have two parents. Okay. Now, who those parents are, that's a whole different issue. I think it's the same issue, you know, okay. I mean, I, th I think that another danger that emerges, and this is Freud's, of course, famous observation, is that, you know, if, if there's mom and child mm -hmm. or father and child, that relationship can get a little closer than it should. Okay. And then the lines get blurry and mixed. And I'm not saying that that happens to everyone, obviously, but, mm -hmm. but it's still a danger that, that's inherent in the situation. They're thrust together too tightly without sufficient resources. Mm -hmm. And so the responsibility has to be distributed more. And, like, I really do think that it's the sign of the degeneration of a society when, that when, when single parenthood becomes anything approximating the norm. It's okay. not a good idea. And, the, and part of the reason I believe that, and, and I think this has to do with the um, overwhelming selfishness of, 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 of modern life, is that marriage isn't for the people who are married. It's for the children, obviously. And like, if you can't handle that, grow the hell up. It's a hell of a thing not to have the confidence of your father. It's really, really hard on people. You know, if your father is someone who says to you, you can do it, I really believe that you can do it. I'll support you in what you're doing. I think that you can sort it out and then acts towards you in that way. That's a gift that really almost no one else can provide you with. Mothers obviously provide, I think they provide the same kind of gift, but earlier, you know, because the mother has to take care of the infant when the infant is just completely dependent. And so, and this is Erickson's idea too, Eric Erickson, is the mother is, is the person who establishes the relationship that allows the developing person to manifest trust, real trust, while you're being carried for crying out loud, you know, you can be dropped. And, and the mother's also the source of food, but the father seems to be something like the, and, and I'm being, I'm obviously parsing these things farther apart than they can be, need to be, because the father can play a nurturing role and the mother can play an encouraging role, but we'll, we'll keep it simple for now. The father seems to be the thing that supports and encourages and says, well, yeah, you know, you're little and small and all of that, and you're subject to destruction and, and, and bullying and, and social pressure and all that, but I know you can do it. I know you can do it. And there's a force in that that's unbelievable, and people who don't have that have a, have a hell of a time. It's actually one of the things that's quite fun about doing psychotherapy, because you get people who have damaged father figures. That, so the father is an encouraging figure, and allows the individual, at least in principle, to support the catastrophe of being voluntarily. If, and I believe this, like, because one of the things I've noticed about kids who are, let's say, neurologically intact, these are, there's lots of reasons why people can develop psychological disorders, and some of them are physical. But imagine that you take a child who's physically healthy, and you put them in a given environment, My my intuition has been that a child needs to have at least one positive role model within uh, imitation distance. Now sometimes he or she can sort of piece that together fragmentarily also from popular media images, you know, the images of the heroes in movies and so on, but it's really helpful to have at least one person in your immediate environment who is manifesting the pattern that characterizes individual success. And so maybe it's something like if that positive role model isn't there, then the easiest default is to a victimized group identity, you know, of secondary gains. And so if we're going to be um, critical in our analysis about victimization culture, we might ask, well, what benefits does it bring to the people who adopt it? So, and you know, those can, and when I mean benefits, I, I don't mean long-term iterative high 
quality benefits. I mean short-term payoffs, let's say. You know how it is, if, if you have work to do and you avoid it, that's a short-term payoff, it's a benefit. And because you don't have to do the work. Now, there's a medium to long-term cost, but I, I'm very curious about, about the, the element of victimization culture that justifies, I think antisocial and avoidant behavior is probably the right way of putting it. Now, you know, where I grew up, I grew up in a working class community. And I had friends and associates who were who ranged from, you know, pretty decent kids to pretty solidly planted in the delinquent camp. And generally, the more delinquent types had a whole handful of rationalizations for their behavior. And and it's it's very dangerous to have those rationalizations at hand because most forms of antisocial behavior, or avoidant behavior for that matter, very bad medium to long term strategies. Because if your father rejects you or doesn't form a relationship with you, it's as if the spirit of civilization has left you outside the walls as of little worth. It's very difficult for people to recover from that. So the father should be an encouraging force, but can be a tyrannical and crushing force. And so that's very, that's a very difficult thing to get right. Partly because if you're my son, then I should impose the highest standards of behavior on you. And I should always be judging what you're doing. I should be judging it with, with the aim of making the best in you come forward. No, I'm going to make you strong so any number of things can happen to you. And when, you're, when you need some care, I'll be there. But otherwise, like out into the world with you, that's the right attitude. And for the father, it's like, get your bloody act together. But I'm on your side. It's because not because I want to destroy you or demean you or push you down in the dominance hierarchy, but because I want the best in you to emerge. And so you need standards. It's like, what are you doing wasting your life? There's way more than that to you. Get your act together and, and bring it out. And that's a message that people really want to hear if they have any sense at all. And generally they do want to hear it. Here you are, suffering away. What makes it worthwhile? Rights? You know, you're completely out. You're completely, you have no idea what you're, you, it's almost impossible to describe how bad an idea that is. Responsibility. That's what gives life meaning. It's like lift a load. Then you can tolerate yourself, right? Because look at you're useless, easily hurt, easily killed. Why should you have any self-respect? That's the, the story of the fall. Pick something up and carry it. Pick, make it heavy enough so that you can think, yeah, well, useless as I am, at least I could move that from there to there. This responsibility thing, that's a whole new order of this, is that young men are so hungry for that, it is unbelievable. And the thing is, for men, there's nothing but responsibility.